Rambam in Hilchos Talmud Torah. <laughs> we are in Perak Perak Hay. We are in Perak Hay. Where are we up to? Find Halacha that we are uh, up to. Do we do Halacha Aleph? We did all of Halacha Aleph. I think we did all of Halacha Aleph. Yes. Ezehu Halacha Beis. Perak Halacha Beis. Ezehu Cholik Al Rabo. A person is not allowed to be Cholik on his Rebbe. That does not mean just to argue with his Rebbe. You're allowed to argue with the Rebbe, right? And in the base Medrash, you're allowed to argue. If Rebbe says something, you want to say something else, you're allowed to argue. But what does it mean, Cholik Al Rabo? Zesha Kovealo Medrash. Yoshe Bedoresh Umalamed Shalo Bershus Rabo. Rabo Kayam. It means if I take the position that undermines my Rebbe's position. That's cholik arabo. Again, it's hard for us to imagine because in these days, um, you know, it doesn't work as you know, similar like this. But let's say in Israel, it's more of like it's like a rav shchuna, like a rav of the neighborhood. So let's say the Talmud of that rav shchuna moved in and kind of took over part of the shchuna, and he became the rav shchuna of that neighborhood. So that's not allowed. <laughs> that's cholik arabo, undermining the authority of the rebbe. That's what cholik arabo is. Even if the rabbi is in a different country, if I somehow usurp some of his power, that is cholik al rabo. It's also for somebody to ask in front of the rabbi. If I'm in the room with my rabbi and somebody asks a question, I can't jump up and give the answer. My rabbi's there. The Gemara is Lashem. Rav Chaim Shulevitz has a whole sticha, if you want to look it up in the Tichas Musar, on Mora Halacha B'fnei Rabo. It's not just a lack of respect, right, which is the obvious, but it's also about a, a, um, a break in the Misora. If we could go back to the source of the Misora one step earlier, then that's our responsibility, to go back earlier and not rely on the Talmud. That's Chole Kal Rabo. And then the Rama gets into different details. How far are you from your Rebbe? Setting up another yeshiva. What if I'm on one side of the world? I'm on the other side of the world. Then obviously it's okay. If you're 12 mil away, a couple miles away. If somebody's about to eat a, cheese, a cheeseburger and my Rebbe doesn't recognize her, you're allowed to say something. <laughs> if, you're, uh, if there's a there's an Abeira about to be committed, then you, you, there's no. no um, Hubbard given when the Tchil Hashem be committed. Ketzad. Going to Ra the Mosadar Isser. Mevnei Shalom Yada Bisura. Or Mevnei Risho. The Rebbe doesn't recognize that there's something going wrong here. Mevnei Shalom Afri Shavolom Alot Avers Aser. You tell him it's not allowed. What if somebody's walking outside the Erev? Right? He doesn't know. Afilu Bifnei Rabo. Avish Lo Nasan Lo Rabo Rishus. Shekal Makam Tish Chil Hashem in Chol Ken Kavol Rav. Whenever there's Chil Hashem. There's no Kavad Arab, it's Kavad Hashem that overrides. And therefore, you can say whatever you want. Aval, again, the problem is, Likvoa Atzmo Lahora. If my Rebbe is the God of Ador, and I'm going to become the God of Ador in his place, Leshev Lahoro is Lachal Shoel. Afilu Besofa Olam, Rabba Besofa Olam. Asalo Lahora is Hashayomus Rabbo. Or as Rabbo gives him permission. There are certain questions that should be answered by the Rebbe. Talmud has to know that it's not his questions to answer. I think I mentioned to you that there are, uh, I remember somebody told us when we were in a Smicha class, there are three types of questions rabbis get. I mentioned this to you. Three types of questions. One type of questions are the Chalant Shilas. Rabbi, my Chalant is burning. I'm having 25 guests over. And then what do I do? How do I warm it up? Shalom Shiloh, that you need an answer right away. You know, the soul in the Sefer Torah Shiloh, every rabbi's nightmare. Um, you know, it's like that pause, Bob Corey pauses. Like, what is he pausing for? There are those, there are some, there are those Bob Bali Corey that you know that are so medoptic on every letter. Most Bali Kriya just go, they don't focus on every letter. But then there are those few in every shul, and like every time there might be a little, I don't know, shin or race or of, you're like, oh, come on. Just go, keep going. You just hope you're not called, and uh, you know that's the uh, <laughs> that's that's the challenge, Chilas. 
You need an answer right away. Then you have most Shilas or the overnight Shilas. Kashrus and I don't know, anything. Most of the Shilas that I get, WhatsApp or whatever, are not urgent, just I uh, want an answer for, uh, for uh, whenever. Fine. And then there are the overarching Shilas. The Shilas that most Rabbanim have to know are beyond them. These are the Shilas for the Yechidei school of every generation, the Poske Hador, and every Rebbe has to realize that this is not for them. So that's what the Ramah is talking about here. These types of Shilas. Those types of Shilas, everybody has to know. You know, if it's above them. Again, sometimes somebody's reached a level that it's not above them. You know, somebody could be young and a post got done, Rabbi Sabolovsky, many of you know from Teaneck, right? He's asked Shilas from all over the world. He's only a few years older than me. But he's asked Shilas because it's not that he chose to be that, but people ask him Shilas because he's, he's of that caliber. And he's, um, you know, he's just, uh, he knows. So again, if one chooses, I want to be the Pose Kador, that's the problem. That's the problem. But again, it's all about the hierarchy. Below, finishing up, and even if your Rebbe dies, it doesn't mean that, okay, it's, I'm taking the place. No, you have to be raw. You have to be fitting to be able to, uh, to do it. Okay. That's all halacha bays and gimel. Let's get back. Aaron, you're sideways. How do you make yourself not sideways? Um, the uh, how do how do we uh, get, get back into our sugya? I assume you're not really sideways in real life. But I think it's just the camera. So um, tomorrow, though, I just uh, I took the deer shoe bechina this weekend. So you know that every thirty blocks there was one daf in Mesecha Shabbos that spoke about if you throw something down at Amos uh, at a wall. The Gemara says, what do you mean at a wall? Where did it rest? The Gemara says it was something sticky. It was on the wall sideways. So that reminded me when Aaron was just sideways. But Baruch Hashem, he's back now, face up, not getting dizzy. The only thing he'll get dizzy from is the mitosis, but not from uh, something physical. But uh, here we go. Okay, so it's been a couple of days. Let's remember what we're up to and uh, add some new uh, one or two ideas that I uh, did not mention last time. So Kuchav Chesam and Aleph, if you remember, we're talking about relatives. We're talking about relatives, and the Gemara says that everybody agrees. Everybody agrees that a great uncle and a great nephew, right? They're they're not related. They're cultural ages to each other. A great uncle and a great nephew. The machlokas is what about a grandfather? What about a grandfather and a grandson? That's a machlokas. Barbara Avashi says even a, that's okay. Also, that's also called a rishon, just like a a, a grandfather and a grand, a great uncle and a great nephew is a Rishon Bishlishi. So too, a grandfather and a grandson, Rishon Bishlishi. And we don't pass in that way? No. Grandfather and grandson are Pasol Laedus. But then we had a Machlokas between the Rashram and Tosfus. Um, they're Pasol Laedus, but what about a great grandfather? The Gemara just talks about a grandfather. What about a great grandfather? That's a Machlokas Rishon. And the Rashram says, Pasol, Pasol, Pasol. Great, 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 great grandfather, puzzle, 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 all the way down. Says the Rashbam, doesn't know matter how far you go, because the son always takes the place of the father. And just like we saw the Rahman Plashon, you always jump a generation. It's like a Rishon, but Rishon. A father and son is not a Rishon and Cheney. It's like a Rishon and a Rishon, and there's a grandson, so he takes the place of his father and his father, and it keeps going up. It keeps going up, and that is Rashbam, straight line. Is always Pasol Edus. While Tosvis and Rov Rishonim argue. Tosvis and Rov Rishonim, they use the Lashon of Ispalig Bara. The door is split. It's limited. Grandfather is a problem. Great grandfather is kosher. The Rabbam also Paskins. Great grandfather is kosher. Ritva quotes this Machlokas. So we mentioned what is, the, what is the issue behind this Machlokas. Maybe it's about how to look at generations in general. But we said, no, rather, we spoke about maybe it's about. Kurva. How do we look at the Psal Kurva? And we had a two, two Gemaras. Two Gemaras, Gemara Sanhedrin, and the Gemara in Abasra. Let's do the Gemara Sanhedrin again because I want to, I want to speak about it uh, a little bit more, uh, that, uh, more than what we focused on. The Gemara Sanhedrin, if you remember, spoke about whether an Arusa, whether an Arusa and her Arus, whether the Arus, the woman's not giving testimony, whether the Arus can testify about the Arusa. The Gemara says, goes through, well, 
right a havamina maybe only against her but uh, but you can, but he can't testify for her and the gemara then ends up saying that there shouldn't be a difference but the gemara here on afkas on a base The right here on Kafkas and Mabes. My daite, why do you say uh, that lo uh, mehemin? After all, in Arusa, all these halakas don't apply. There's no aninus, there's no tuma, they say in a yarcha, right? So you see all these halakas that they're not related. They're not considered related. So Southern Gemara says, no, all those halakas are probably on she'er, on she'er. So they're not she'er yet. They're not she'er basar yet. They're not one basar echad. But edus ikruve daitahu. Ikruve daitahu legabe. Edus is tali and kiruv das. And kiruv das is is uh, applies to. They love each other, and therefore basal leedus. Fine. This gemara clearly. I'm saying clearly now, but I'm going to take it back a little bit later. But I'm saying clearly now. Clearly says that. Uh, so Tarov is about Shashaker, about Nogia Bedover, about Shimai Lai, and therefore because they love each other, so that's why So Tarov is a problem. Meaning, it sounds like from this Gemara, technically they're not related, right? That's why all these other halachas, you know, uh, are true, but it's enough for Nogia Bedover. I noted then, um, you know what, let's Let's wait. The Rambam, how the Rambam formulates this, but we'll get back to that in a few minutes. That's one Gemara. But then we said the other Gemara, Al Basra, Nuntes. Gemara there has a rhetorical line and says, without getting into the context, Moshe Viaron, Moshe Viaron, two brothers. Are they? Are we worried they're going to lie? Moshe and Aaron, of course not. But what are we worried about? There's a of They can't testify because it's a there's a of Right? What's the language of the Gemara, the language of Gemara Kufnun Tesam and Aleph, Zeras Melechu, Shalom Yehidu Lahem, Zeras Melech, Zeras Melech. That's a very different approach. Why is Psul Karov Pasul Edus? Because Zeras Akasiv. We have no chash that they're going to lie, but it's a Zeras Akasiv that they are Pasul Edus. So you have these two different Gemaras. So two ideas. So we said maybe. Maybe it's two different issues. We even said maybe there are nafkaminas. Remember, we said the two nafkaminas, whether you say it's Gzeras Akasav or Kirav Das. Number one, what if they don't know their Krovim? Maybe you with me, right? Maybe they, if they don't know their Krovim, they don't know their Krovim, so then it's Gzeras Akasav, they're still Krovim, but they don't know. So maybe there's no Kirav Das. That's a Chiddush. But the other Nafkamina we said, what about Gerim? Achim Gerim. Two brothers that love each other. They're brothers. They both converted and halachically they're not related to each other. They're allowed to, if you say it's, it's based on Gzeras HaKas of Krovim, then they're kosher, they're not related. If it's based on Kirib Das, then they, they shouldn't be able to testify. Right, so those are two Nafkaminas. And maybe we said, Maybe this is the machlokas between the Rashbam and the other Rishonim. Other Rishonim say only a grandfather and a grand and a grandson. Right? This order of Al-Khanan said because only two generations. Remember, Al Khanan quoted the Rashi and Bracious. The Rachmanis of a grandfather is on a grandson, but not more. If you say it goes on Chashash Sheker, they love each other. Maybe it only be two. Gen- maybe it only be up to the two generations. But if you say it's there, it's like Kasev, Karov. So maybe some the Rashbam says, because Kirva goes straight up. It's always brought power to Abuah. And therefore, that's what we said. Okay. But it's not so simple. It's not so simple to suggest this. This is what I didn't formulate this like uh, as we're about to last time. I just wanted it to be, it to be clearer right now. Number one, we'd rather not say the Machlokas and the Gemara. We'd rather not say it's a machlokas asugius. You never like to say that. Machlokas asugius. So that's one reason we'd rather not say that these are two very different uh, approaches to the sugya. Again, Rishonim, we could say it's a machlokas Rishonim. We'd rather not say it's a machlokas in the Gemaras, who stomach the Gemaras. That's one reason we'd rather not stop now. Number one. 
Number two, <laughs> nafkaminas aren't nafkaminas aren't so pachet. First nafkamina. If they don't know, they could testify. That would be a chiddush gaga. We don't have anybody who says that. To say that just because we don't, if Bezdin knows their brothers, but let him testify, even though they don't know their brothers, that would be a chiddush gaga. Not impossible. We don't have evidence against that. But that would be a chiddush gaga. As well as other nafkamina, right? Achim Gerim. Everybody says that they're kosher leaders, even though they love each other and they're brothers. So it's hard to say that that's enough gemina because <laughs> Shochan Aruch, Shochan Aruch, we saw Simon Lam and Gimel Sif Yud Aleph says they are kosher. So really, 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 maybe the real Gemara. And this I didn't say last week. Maybe the real Gemara is Gemara Bab Asri. Krovim are psulim because the Torah says they're possible. We don't always think that they're going to lie. That's not the reason. Right? That's not the reason why. It's not like a, a, a puzzle of ages. It's not like a ganav. Right? Or an ogeb adavar. No, a tarv is possible because of their sakasim. And that's why gerim are kosher. And that's why even if they don't know, It'll probably be puzzle. The question is, how do you read that Gemara Sanhedrin, though? Right, the Gemara Sanhedrin seems to say that Kira of Dots plays a role. How do you read that Gemara Sanhedrin? Yes, Levi. Is it possible to say some sort of like mixture, like a both? Because you could say a low plug, since there are some cases, brothers, they're definitely, that's going to be, that's going to be Shashaker. So. Okay. Some... Okay, so so yeah, the, so the first I want to say a smaller idea and a little larger idea. So the smaller idea is like what you just said. Maybe the Gemara says keyword Das and Sanhedrin because that's what happened. That's what's true most of the time. Most of the time, not that it's always. Most of the time, you know, there's Xeris Akasov is there, but <laughs> most of the time there's also Kiruv. It's a Svara that applies in most cases. It's not the real basis for the din. The real basis for the din is Xeris Melech. Svar in Sanhedrin is just something that applies most of the time. It doesn't really mean that that's the main reason. It could be an added. But maybe there's something deeper. Maybe you have to say this because according to that approach, so what's the Gemara saying? They're not related, but, but we're still going to apostle them? Maybe there's some a different way to read that Gemara in Sanhedrin. And I left you with this question last week. If you read that Gemara on the surface, what is it saying? Technically, an Arus is not related, but because they love each other, we're going to say she's puzzle. So why wouldn't we say, say the same thing by Gerim? By Achim Gerim? They're also not related, but we also think they might lie. What's the difference between Gerim, Achim, and Arusa? Achim Gerim, we say, are kosher to testify with each other, even though there's Kirube Das. While in Arusa, we say cannot testify. But what do you mean? If they're not related, they're not related. It should be kosher. Oh. Maybe that Gemara in Sanhedrin is not telling us a general rule of that Psul Kurva. It's not what the Gemara is doing. You know what the Gemara there is struggling with? State of Arison. Gemara is trying to figure out, Arison is this quasi stage one of marriage. They're married, they're not married. It was a Kenyan, there wasn't Isuan yet. So the Gemara is trying to figure out which halachos go by Arison. Which halachos go by Nisuin? The Gemara says, Aninus and Avelus and Tumas Koanim, that's all Nisuin. That needs full fledged She'er. What, what, what does Arison do? Ish is ish. She's Mizana now, she's Chayav Nisa. Eating Truma. 
if the husband is a Kohen, he can eat Truma. So there are some halachos that go by errors and some that go by Nisuin. That's what the Gemara is trying to figure it out. And the Gemara says, Kirav Das. What does Kirav Das tell me? Kirav Das says, you know what? We're going to say Psal Adis goes by Arisin. Not because all Psal Tarov always is Mishum Kirav Das. In this situation, where we're not sure where to put Psal Adis, because some halachas go by Arisin and some go by Nisuin, you know what we say? You know what? Say she's puzzle because she's kind of related. She's kind of related. I, what about Gerim? Of course not. Gerim brothers, they're allowed to testify. It's not, it's not that anybody who has a key of dots are going to say are Krovin. No. Taro is because of Gerim Saktasev. They're related. It's just that Arusa is somewhere in the middle, related and not related. So we don't know where to put Psal Edus. So that's where the Gemara says, you know what? Kiruv Das will say she's Psal. And now, I look back, now we appreciate that Rambam even more. Remember the Rambam? And the Rambam quoted this Gemara in Ilchaz Edus. Right, where was the Rambam? Yud Gimel, Yud Dalid. Yud Gimel, Yud Dalid. The Rambam says, Ishto Arusa. Even though the marriage is not complete yet, the Ashus is not completed yet. But we're going to treat her as fully married regarding Edus. Why? Because it's Kirav Das. Not because every Tzoltarev is because of Kirav Das. Here we're trying to figure out where to put it. We'll consider her married because of this aspect. This aspect of Edus, Kirib Das. So maybe it's very limited. I'm not saying in general, Karov. Just to put in brackets, there's a fascinating contrast. The tunnel, you're going to like this one. You're going to sit on it this afternoon for a while, right? There's a f- contrast. Raman says here, even though they're not really married fully, we'll consider them Ke'ilu with Nesua. Right for Edus. There's another Rambam that says almost exactly the opposite direction. You might be familiar with this Rambam. If you ever learn Meseches Kiddushin, if you ever learn Meseches Kiddushin, right, you know that the Rambam holds what is Nisuin, what the Rambam cheat of Nisuin. We know what Kiddushin is, Kesav Star and Bia. Nisuin is very unclear. There are six different opinions in the Rishonim. What do you have to do for Nisuin? The canopy, Nisal or Shuso. What does the what does the Rambam say? Anybody remember? Rambam says Yichud Roy Labia. Yichud Roy Labia. Yichud room is the Rambam's marriage. That's the Rambam's marriage. The Yichud room. Yichud Roy Labia, and that's why, according to the Rambam, only according to the Rambam is a chupas nida impactful on the marriage. All other Rishonim say you can have a full chupa even though she's a nida, right? Because you're bringing her into the house. You put her under the canopy. You do a lot of things. Only the Rambam. The Rambam says, you know what? Marriages, second stage, yichud roi to have bia. So if she's a nida, you can't have bia with her. So that yichud is impaired. According to the Rambam, they're not fully married. Only the Rambam says that. So the Rambam says in Hilchus Ishus, when he's talking about this, he says the Lashon. This is Paragud Alacha Beis in Ishus. After Shear, line up this Rambam with the Rambam that we just read. In Ilkas Edus, you give me your Dalid. Right? You give me your Dalid. Yeah. But it's almost the exact mirror image. The Rambam says, even our Nichza Arusa Lachupa, once the Arusa goes into the Chupa, then she's Mutaris Lava Bukhalesha Yurtza. Are you Ishto Gemur Lachal Dabar? Once you go into the Chupa, fully married. Aval, I'm skipping a line. If she's a nida, says the Rambam, we try to prevent chupas nidas if we can, but sometimes they happen. If she's a nida, even though they already had chupa and they had yichud, 
the Nisuin have not been completed. Aharehi Ke'arusa Adayin. And she's still like an Arusa. Even though they had the marriage ceremony, they're still, he's, she's still like an Arusa. What does the Ram say by Chupas Nita? Even though they had marriage, it's only Ka'arusa. What did he say in our context? In Arusa, even though they're not really married, it's like an Asua. It's the exact opposite. Two different halachas. It's not a contradiction. But it's very interesting to see these two Ramams together. They both reflect that there's a process here. They both reflect that there's a process. In Ilchas Eidus, the process is not completed, but we'll consider it complete. By Ilchas Eidus, because of Kirav Das, and by Chupas Nida, we'll say, the process is really complete. It should be complete. They had, they had chuppah. The Ramam says it was a faulty chuppah, so it's ki'ilu, they don't, she's like an arusa. So it's like, contrast those two Rambams uh, to, each, uh, to each other. Okay, this is all part one of our sugya. Part one of Apsul Parov. Uh, let's move on now, though, to what the Maharik does to our sugya. What the Maharik does to our sugya. The Maharik was one of the great Whoa. one of the great early, really late Rishonim, I would say, 1400s. So if you consider the Abarbanel and Meiri, Meiri was a little earlier. Abarbanel, they say, was like the last Rishon. That's what they call him. Abarbanel, right, he was in the, he was in the expulsion in 1492. Somebody once quoted, I don't remember who, a Gadol that said, Shulchan Arach was the last Rishon and the Ramo was the first Achron. I don't know exactly what that means. They both kind of overlapped a little bit. But um, again, that, that's the time period. So this is mid 1400s. Maharik, 1420 to 1480, about. It. He was the Rebbe of the Bartanura, of the Rath. The Rebbe of the Rath. So the Maharik writes, I gave it to you in Shorish Mandalin. Right, what does he say? What's his issue? Who gets the Kaddish and Shul? Who gets the Kaddish and Shul? Up until the 1700s, right? You might be familiar with this. Up until the 1700s, only one person said every Kaddish Yasom and Shul. They switched off. I think in Yaki Shuls, they still do it. Anybody a Yaki here? The Davenant Broyers? Anybody? I, th I think in the Yaki Shuls, they still, some Yeshivas also. Some Yeshivas also. They, they give the Kaddishes out, they, they split them up. Up until the 1700s, that was the Minog. There was some plague, I don't remember, you can look it up in history books. It was a plague in the 1700s. Black plague, bubonic plague, I have no idea. During the times of Rabbi Kiva Eger, it was a plague. So there were so many Yisomim, Rahman al So the, the Rabbanan said, you know what? Everybody can say Kaddish. Everybody can say, and since then, since then, all the Yisomim say Kaddish and Shul. Right? That's, the, uh, that's how it works. But uh, the Ma'ariks day, only one person said Kaddish. The question is, who gets the Kaddish? It was a son of one person. It was a grandson of another person. Does the grandson have any rights to the Kaddish? That was the question of the Maharik. Does the grandson have any rights? So what does he say? He says, well, doesn't the Gemara say, B'nei banim harahim kebanim? The Gemara says that in Yavamis. B'nei banim harahim kebanim. Grandchildren are like children. It says the Maharik, that's very, very limited. That principle is very, very limited. Only regarding one halacha. Which halacha? Puravu. Puravu. If somebody has a son and a daughter, and the son dies, but the son has a son, you still did the mitzvah puravu. Right? B'nei banim, hiring kabanim, it's as if you have a son and a daughter. Fine. But other than that, says the Marik, a grandson has no rights to the cottage. Lo avi kabanim mamish. Yesh lo leben lito yosem ibn aben. You want to have percentages? Okay. The son gets at least two thirds. Two thirds, one third. It's not equal rights. The kol shekain. The fiyani is daiti. Ain lo ben aben lo mer kaddish. Yeshvo zekain lo yosem yadam acher. A grandson is just like a stranger, says the Maharik. It's like a stranger. The harei matzinu shamiras hakaddish tali b'chiyev kavid. Because I think Kaddish has to do with Kibbut Av. Kaddish has to do with Kibbut Av. 
There's no such thing, says the Marik, as Kibud Saba. Honoring your grandfather is no different than honoring any old man in Shul, says the Marik. Halachically. The Marik was before the Rama. Before the Shulchan Aruch, right? We don't find anywhere, says the Marik, that a grandson has a chiv to honor his grandfather. One second. Ella, what do we have in Shas? Beferish. And this is true. In Shas Beferish, we only have Kibud Av, Kibud Aim, Kibud Eishes Av, father's wife, Baal Imo, Wife's husband, Achiv Agadol, older brother. The only thing in Shas explicitly is father, mother, spouses of parents, and older brother. That's it, says the Maharik. Nowhere does it say in Shas that technically there is a Chiv of Kibud grandfather. That's the Marik. We didn't get to our Gemara yet. But yeah, okay, hands are up. Yeah, Avram, you had your hand up first. Yeah. Is that why if there are sons or children alive, then a husband doesn't have to say Kaddish for his wife because the sons are saying it because they have a din of Kibut of their mother, but the husband doesn't have a din of Kibut of his wife? So it's... That's for yeah, sure. To say Kaddish. Yes. That's for sure. It flows from Kavod. It flows from Kavod. Like, a, would a husband have any... How, we don't know how these Kabbalistic things work. But, um, but you know, would a, would a husband have anything more adif with sides emotional than anybody else? Maybe not. Maybe not. Uh, okay, somebody else had their hand up. Yes, Yosef. Why would you say a Kavod Homer that if you have to respect your parents and your parents have to respect their parents, that you have to respect your parents? Meaning you're asking why doesn't it flow from father? Yeah. Okay, so we'll talk about it. We'll get to that. Uh, Yaakov, yeah. Uh, do we do we say that there's no Kaddish by any non-child parent relationship? Like, parent doesn't say... Uh, we, we, get, we, we get a Kaddish said generally, meaning because we want the Kaddish is powerful for the Neshama, uh, and sometimes if there's nobody to say Kaddish, you pay somebody to say Kaddish for the year. But there is something powerful about a son. There is a discussion in the post about a daughter. That's why some women, you know, the, the say Kaddish behind the Mechitza. Uh, but again, I'm not going to get into that now. But there is something about, a, uh, uh, you know, children saying uh, Kaddish. That's the Maharik. That's the Maharik. So now the uh, Maharik says, okay, let's get into Basra Kuf Chavches. What's my raya? First of all, it's a raya by omission. First of all, a raya by omission. But then he says, more than omission. What's my proof? Mar Baravachi. Mar Baravashi in our Gemara says a grandson and a grandfather are kashalatis to each other. Huh. Don't get any better right than that. They're kashalatis. A grandson could testify for a grandfather. If there was a mitzvah of keyboard, if it's sure, who would be able to say that? Sorry, ben ben baravashi. He knows what you're going to ask in the next line. We don't paskin like him. What are you talking about? Right? We don't paskin. We paskin puzzle. What a riot are you bringing? Even though we don't paskin like him, you call makom, shita shesor, chul yashiv abraisa. Even though we don't paskin like him, what does he do with the principle? But Ebanim harim kibanim. How could he say, kosher, Ebanim harim kibanim? It must be that that principle is limited to Peruvu. He leaves it. 
It's fascinating. He brings a riot from a sheet that we don't bask in like. You see, he must hold, he must have some svara, even though in that context specifically, we don't paskin like him. The fact that there's a shita out there, says the Maharik, it must be that there no, there's no mitzvah of kibbutz. A stranger could say Kaddish, but that's the uh, that's the Maharik. He quotes Mar Baravashi as a raya, acknowledging that we don't paskin like him, but saying, but oh, you know what? He knows the principle of Bnei Banaharim Kabanim too, and he has to do something with that principle. So it must be that you know he's uh, that principle is very is very limited. There are some Ramazim and maybe supports the Mar Baravachi. Where does he get this from? Okay, he gets this from the fact that it's a, it's a great raya by omission. That is true. The Gemara should say, Chayev Adam Kibud Saba. It should say that somewhere. It should say that. It doesn't say that. I think that's very strong. Again, Yosef, we have to get to your point soon. But that's the uh, number one. There are other supports. The Rambam. The Rambam in. I gave you an Ilchas Mamrim. The Rambam and Ilchas Mamrim. Whenever I quote Ilchas Mamrim, I always mention this is the Rambam at his best in organization. The Rambam made up Ilchas Mamrim. Right? Chazal, there's no Ilchas Mamrim. Shabbos and Shechita and all those. Mamrim. The Rambam puts together, right? Uh, arguing with Bezdin, and Sarah and Kibbut Avaim. All in the same area of Alachit. It's just fascinating. But now we know. Now we have Ilchas Mamrim. The Rambam says in Barakalach Gimel, if somebody curses their grandparents with all the rules of cursing, with Shem Hashem, it's like cursing any other fellow Jew. Right? There's a special Aveira of cursing your parents. The Rambam says, Mekalel Avi Aviv, Avi Imo, Arezek, Mekalel Echad Mishar Hakahal. Like you're cursing, stop a person. Where does he get this from? So the Kesef Mishnah always tells us the source. Ah, Makos Yudbeis. Makos Yudbeis. So this is a crucial Gemara in this sugya. Makos Yudbeis. What does Gemara say Makos Yudbeis? Gemara has two days. Whether a son could be a Goal Adam against his father. Right, that's the whole second parrot in Makos about Golas. The whole story, I'm not going to, I'm going to just say it once now. Rahman al Okay, That counts for like the next 10 minutes, right? But the, uh, you know, we're talking about parents killing their children and grandchildren. All right, it's not, not a pleasant Gemara if you think about it. But the, the Gemara here says, sometimes a son will be a Gol Adam, a relative that could kill, and sometimes not. The Gemara says, when yes, when no. The Gemara answers, Habib no. One case is about a son, one case is about a grandson. What does that mean? So we'll go with Rashi's pshat. Rashi says, if a father kills a son, then the grandson is allowed to kill the father. As the goal Adam, for his own father. Again, if a father kills a son, then the grandson It'd be the Gaul Adam and kill his grandfather. But if the father kills his grandson, if the father kills the grandson, then the guy in the middle, the son, cannot kill his father. That's how Rashi reads the Gemara. If a father kills a grandson, then the father cannot, the middle generation cannot, Kill the father. If the father kills a son, then the grandson can. Why? Why? Rashi says there's a mitzvah of kibud av, but no mitzvah of kibud saba. A gol adam can't override covet. That's what Rashi says. Eno muzar al fodo. Wow. Wow. Seems to be a Beferish Gemara like the Maharik. Right? A grandfather is allowed to kill his, 
a grandson is allowed to kill his grandfather, if he's the Gaul Adam, Eno Muzar al Kodo, that's the Russian of Rashi. Says the Kesef Mishnah, that's the Makar for the Rambam in Hilchaz Mamrim. Rambam in Hilchaz Mamrim, who says, if you curse your grandfather, it's like you're cursing anybody else. He gets that from this Rod Finnis Gemara. That's the Kesef Mishnah. And he quotes how the Maharik reads the, uh, and how Rashi reads the Gemara. And one more Gemara before we try to get out of it. One more Gemara, the Gemara in Sota. The Gemara in Sota. Sota Mentes. Sota Mentes Amad Aleph. We're at the bottom. Hope you saw this Gemara. Rav Acha Bar Yaakov, second to last skinny line. Rav Acha Bar Yaakov, Itzel Beber, Rav Yaakov Bar Barte. Rav Acha Bar Yaakov took care of his grandson for many years. He raised him. Care of his grandson. He got old, and the grandson got older. Amarle, one time the grandfather said, "Ashkin Maya, can you get me a drink, please." Very strange story in the Gemara, but sometimes the Gemara has strange stories. You have to figure out what the message is, missing a lot of details. He says to his grandson, "Can you get me some water, please?" Amarle, la brichana. He says, "Sorry, I'm not your son." Whoa. Sorry, I'm not your son. Rashi. The ain alai lechabedcha keben. Whoa. I don't have to be machabed you like a son. The ain alai lechabedcha keben. So, sounds like the Maharik. Sounds like Maharik. So, okay. Maybe we'll, we can end this year and uh, good. Shalom al Yisrael and Maharik, based on our Gemara, even though we don't paskin like that, Shita, and the uh, Gemara in Sota, and um, right, um, the uh, other source, Gemara in Makis. Problem. The Rama. Problem is the Rama. What does the Rama say? Who saw the Rama? The Rama in Yeridea, Hilchus Kibbutzim. The Rama says the Farish. It's a mitzvah to be mechabed your grandfather. Mitzvah to be mechabed your grandfather. The Ramah says. The Ramah was after the Marik. A hundred years later. Says the Ramah. Yesh Omrim. He quotes the Marik. Eino chayiv b'kavad aviyaviv. Marik. Eino nearly. Says the says the Ramah. I don't agree with the Marik. Ella the chayiv b'kavod aviv yosem b'kavod aviv yavim. There is a chayiv of kibud av and kibud aviv yavim. The kibud av is stronger than kibud aviv yavim, but it still exists. And what's his raya? Rashi, another Rashi. Gracious, mem vav aleph. It's a medrash. Rashi quotes the Medrash. Rashi quotes the Medrash. The Medrash is written. Mem Vav Aleph in Parshas Vayigash. Yaakov Avinu is on his way down to Mitzrayim. What happens? He goes to Beersheba. He stops in Beersheba on the way down to Mitzrayim and he gives Karbanos to Elokei of Iv Yitzchak. He gives Karbanos to the God of his father Yitzchak. Yes, Rashi. What about his God of his grandfather Abraham? Why does it only say the God of his father Yitzchak? Says Rashi, quoting the gracious Rabbah, Chayiv Adam bekavid Aviv Yoser Mikvod Zakena. This is Chayiv and Kibud Av more than Kibud Zaken. Lefichach Talav Yitzchak Lo Ba Abraham. That's what it only says Yitzchak and not Abraham. It's clear from Rashi. From Rashi, there is kibud zakain. It's just not as much. It's not as much. But there is kibud zakain. Machlokas Maharik and the Rama. The problem is though, what do we do with Rashi? Rashi, so it's himself. 
right? How do you work out the Gemara and Makas, the Gemara and Sota? So let's work on Makas and Sota first. Rabbi. If you look at the Tishrei Tshuva, look at the Tishrei Tshuva, go say this is getting back to your point now. So maybe you're about to ask this, but you know, getting back to your point now, let me just say this because maybe, you know, this is what we're going to relate to. This chetshuv is if katan yudches here, quotes the machlok in the Rambam and the Ramban. Machlok is in the Shrashim. We know there's a mitzvah to honor the older brother. It's a machlok is whether it's the oldest brother or the older brother. That's a machlok, yes? Let's just go with what everybody says, at least the oldest brother. Does that apply after the father died? That's the machlokas between the Rambam and the Ramban. Does honoring your older brother still exist after your father dies? Machlokas, Rambam, and the Ramban. What's the issue? Explains the Bishay Tshuva. What's the issue? What Yosef just said before. Is honoring your older brother an independent idea, or is it just a way of honoring your father and your parents? That's a chakira within Kavod Achagadol. If it's only because of honoring your parents, then maybe it only applies when your parents are alive. Just like Aishas Av. Like Aishas Av. That's a chakira by by Achagadol. Does it only apply when the father's alive or even after the father dies? Maybe one could suggest a similar chakira by grandfather. Maybe you're right. Kibud Zakain is limited. It's not on the same level. But maybe it's an outgrowth or keep it off. Right? It's not a separate idea. It's like that Hakira in, in, in Achagadol. That Gemara in Makos. What does Rashi say there? What does the Gemara say? If the father kills the son, so then the grandson could kill the grandfather because there's no keep it up. Rashi might not be saying there's no keep it up, there's no keep it grandfather at all. I'm not making a blanket statement. In that case, there's no keep it grandfather. Why? Why is there no keep it grandfather in that case? Because there's no father to be the intermediary. Because the father died. The father died. Maybe that's all Rashi is saying. Father died, so then that's why there's no kibud. Generally, maybe there is. Akamar and Sota. What does that Kamar and Sota say? The grandfather was taking care of the grandson. He doesn't say Pafarish, but why was that happening? Could be because the father died. Why else would the grandfather be taking care of the grandson? So maybe Rashi doesn't say a blanket statement. There's no, there's no keyboard of a grandfather. There's a keyboard of a grandfather when the father's alive. So Avram's going to ask, was Avram still alive when Yaakov went down to Mitzrayim? You're going to ask that? No? Okay, that's so what I thought you were going to ask. Because uh, that's where Rashi says it's more than. It's more than. But... Uh, <laughs> But anyway, this could answer for Makos and for Sota. You might even say, let me just say one more line, and then you might even say it even a little sharper, even sharper. It's not just that when the grandson is not mechuyiv in the covenant of the grandfather, he's allowed to kill him, but this is kibbut av, because he's avenging the death of his father. It's not just that there's no more keyboard grandfather because his father's dead. This is part of keyboard father. 
because he's avenging the death of his father. That's a, that's a little sharper formulation, both of them though to explain how it's a more limited uh, limited case. Okay, questions? Uh, Avram and then Yosef, if you still have, yeah. So by the Ravacha Baryakov, it was his daughter's son. So for honoring your mother's father, it would be an extension of Kibudain. So that's a good, so, some Achronim say that as the answer. Some Achronim say, well, maybe that Gemara is not a Kasha because it's it's mother's father, not father's father. So, would there be, that, so according to this suggestion, there would be no Kibud ever of a mother's father? Or according to, the, according to that suggestion that the Achronim say. Because which is hard because if you say if you say it's an outgrowth of covet of parents, then it shouldn't make a difference because you have to be honor your father, you have to honor your mother. So if it's something independent, so then it could be machalic. But uh, but if it flows from a father, then then not. Go save him. So you had a question before. I was wondering, is the Marik saying that there's no keyboard zakin or there's specifically no keyboard grandfather? You can't argue with the Pasuk and Chumish, but they save a takum. You have to give right. you have to so so, so it's my why... grandfather. When I say Duncan, I mean I mean grandfather. Okay. Saba, Saba. Um, okay. Um, what about the Rambam and Ilchus Mamrim? That cursing your grandfather is like cursing anybody else. That's not such a problem. It's a special din by parents. You know, if you, if, if somebody curses their father's wife, that's also no different than cursing anybody else. Even though there's for sure a mitzvah of kibud. Right? If somebody curses their older brother. There's no separate Avera. But the Rama Milchaz Mamrim is not such a Raya for the Ma'arik because that's that's different. That's different. Are there supports to the Rama? Let's just finish this two more minutes and then tomorrow we'll start the new Sugya. Are there supports for the other Shita? The Rama? So just two Alachas I gave you. The Shulchanar quote based on the Gemara is a special mitzvah for a grandfather to learn with a grandson. We discussed that earlier in the year. It's a special mitzvah. Yeradea Reish Mem Hey. It's a special mitzvah for a grandfather to learn with a grandson. You see, there's a special connection there. Or, and with this we'll finish. This I would never have come up with. Shvus Yaakov, Rabbi Yaakov Reicher, one of the great Achronim in the 1700s. He says, Marat Sadi Aleph Amabes. Here in Baba Basra. In Hamokher as Asvina, the last Amud. Hopefully, some of you did this in Bikiyas. Based on a Pasik, based on a Pasik in uh, in Divrei Hayamim, Vayasem in, in Malachim, Vayasem Kisei Laim Amelech. Pasik says, he put a throne right next to Shlomo's throne, the mother of Malchus. Who's that? Who's Ima Shamachus? Who's Ima Shamachus? Somebody tell me. All right. Rus. Rus. Rus is Ima Shamachus. The Gemara says that there was a special, right, the previous line. Yashvu Sham Zurus Hamoavia, Sharasa Bamalchus Shlomo, Ben Beno, Shal Ben Bena. Great, great, great. Three grades, maybe? Four grades? Rus gets a, gets a throne. That's the Shvus Yaakov. His throne, it seems from the Pasuk, was right next to Shlomo's throne. A king is not allowed to be mochel on his covet. How could you put another throne right next to your throne? Rus must have been very old. Which is all, interesting. If Shlomo was the king, that means David already died. So Rus outlived David. David only lived 70 years. How is there a, a throne set up, asked the Shvus Yaakov, if, if um, the Melech the Machal, you can't put another throne next to yours. Ah, unless there's a mitzvah of Kibbutzim. If there's a mitzvah of honoring your great, 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 great grandmother, then maybe it's okay. And maybe this, and this is the maybe this is a remez to the sheets of the Rashbam. That we started off with. The Shramu says, all generations go straight up, go straight down, doesn't matter how many. If this deek of the Shus Yaakov is correct, another throne right next to the Shlomos, then that would be something uh, 
Asmach to the Rashbam. But basically, we had two parts to the sugya. First half, we spoke about the Psul Karov itself. And then we spoke about grandfather specifically because the Maharik quotes our Gemara as a Raya to, to, um, to that. The next sugya, which I didn't <laughs> send you the Marmakomos uh, for yet, Mar Shir again is going to be early. I mean, our early is going to be 4 p.m. Israel time. I'm sorry, lady, but just got to gotta do it. Got to get up and seek it tomorrow. You can take a nap afterwards. Um, you know, I'm sure, uh, you know, uh, Ellie will, will learn with you earlier also. I'm going to do an all-nighter. It's, uh, 